Golden Kamu is about the real-life events of 1907, the consequences of the Russo-Japanese war on Japan and on the soldiers that had to brutally slaughter their fellow men, and the real-life extinction and colonization of the Amui people and their culture. But also it's about these goofy dudes that search for gold and eat squirrel brains and shit. In all fairness though, the hunt for gold is what everything centers around, cause you see, we have to puzzle a map together to find the gold and the map is scattered all over Japan in the form of people, <laughs> because the map is tattooed on their bodies. So we go around hunting for these extremely dangerous criminals to copy their tattoos or, you know, just to skin them alive. And as you might imagine, a lot of different people are after the gold and the power that it brings. So our main cast is always expanding and encountering some crazy motherfuckers. This shit is so good and I explain to you why after the quirky title drop. I'm a god. God damn, dude, the character design in here is almost flawless. This shit is so personable, so recognizable, and yet realistic. Because you see, every character, or at least most of them in here, feel grounded. Which, in turn, when some crazy shit happens, makes it so much more impactful. Now, be that somebody getting shot, some skin being teared up, a knife slicing through uh, these motherfuckers like it's nothing, it's... Every terrible, uh, obscene, insane shit you can think of is in this manga and is illustrated in such a great way. Another great aspect would be the character impressions, their behavior in general. Everything is shown to us in a very subtle way, yet we still feel and understand what the characters are going through, the stakes in the narrative, the, the general pressure on them, and it's very well executed. And so goes for generally every other aspect of the art, apart from this one little thing that is... Uh, actually uh, a bit of a big issue when it comes to the art backgrounds oh boy this shit looks terrible now th that's the case for basically the whole manga however the first half is uh, it's so bad this shit looks like i went on google and searched up a fucking three cut out png and turned that shit black and slapped it on some white background and then i drew on the fucking character on top of that it it looks so fucking awkward now let me just say this again the mangaka is able to cover that shit up in a, in a better way and it's not so obvious in the later parts of the story but something that doesn't get better in almost any way are all of the sceneries in here uh they they always just look bad for some reason. And the weird thing is that they're normally there to show us the beauty of, of the land of Japan and, and show us how fucking great everything is. And look at this page, dude. This doesn't look beautiful. This looks like I took a picture uh, with my flip phone and then applied a weird filter to it. This, this just looks bad. Now, if you do me a favor and focus on the lower part of this uh, great spread over here, you would see that this, this character is very simple and that's all right. However, what's not all right is that the background he's uh, on top of is so much more complicated than him. And why is that the case? Why, why does this look so fucking uncanny? Well, because this is clearly just some kind of a grass template that's put on in the background for no apparent reason. And we see that shit on multiple occasions and every time it's there, it looks fucking bad. And the same thing goes for some types of guns, by the way, it's clear that 3D models are used in the manga and then just have a weird filter slapped on them to make them look kind of 2D. But in general, when it comes to this one type of gun, that shit always looks awkward in the panel. Now let's forget about all that dumb shit and start talking about what actually matters the story. Dude, this shit is so smooth, even though sometimes it can feel a little disjointed, if you keep up with the manga and if you dedicate a little bit of your time to progress, you realize that everything in here happens for a purpose. Everything comes together nicely, everything just clicks and it makes sense, it, clearly every aspect of the story and every fucking plot beat that is happening has been thought out ahead of time and it's so fucking satisfying to read and that applies to the later two thirds of the manga because the first one third or this many chapters feel feel kind of bad but to get to that we have to establish a few things and mainly that in the first one third of the story everything can be separated into uh, plot progression and character progression you know shit moving forward and 
hunting and cooking food. Now, don't get me wrong here. I like the fact that we explore the culture of the Anui people, especially considering how important is that later on in the story, right? I like that I know all of these dumbass fucking traps. I like the fact that I can catch squirrels now. And I like that the, our dudes cook and have fucking fun time and, and shit. It's genuinely great. I like that, but I don't like how it's executed. Because every time the story picks up a little bit of momentum, right, we discover a new party that's uh, trying to get the gold, or we're introduced to a few new interesting characters, or, or something exciting happens, the story stops, we fucking hunt foxes and squirrels for half a chapter, and then we slowly start building up some momentum, and then we kill that shit, and we repeat that a bunch of fucking times. And it's so unfortunate, because when you see the pacing of the manga get slaughtered so consistently in such an ugly way, you can't help but look away for a little bit, you know? It's just, I feel like if a regular manga reader picks up this shit, and they're interested in the story, and all of a sudden they're hit with a bunch of random fucking text, uh, they have uh, like basically two instincts. One of which would be just to read like every fifth word in here, maybe get what's happening, you know, get the, the general idea and just move on to the plot and what they're actually interested in. Or just drop the manga, just drop the manga and never read it again. Now, of course, I read every fucking word of this and I enjoyed it, but this is just not integrated well into the story. Now you may ask, how do you even integrate that into the story without like stopping everything or how would that even look like, right? Uh, can it even be done? Yes, it can. And yes, it was by the manga. Just later on, this knife scene, the, the, the situation with this knife takes all of the greatest parts of the manga. And that being the culture of the Anui people, a reference to a real life artifact you can go and see in a museum and meaningful character progression and in general plot progression. All of that is in here, in this scenario, in, the, in these like two chapters or something. And it's so well integrated and you care and it's great. And that's just one of many examples of how later on in the manga, the culture of the Anui people is integrated so much better. And that's mainly because the hunting is re significantly reduced. We still hunt some fucking things here and there, but for the most part, that shit happens pretty fucking rarely. And the cooking of the food and uh, dedicating like, uh, I don't know, half a chapter to um, cooking blood sausages and shit that is just not there anymore. We just forget about the food altogether. We give a little homage uh, to the fact that, I don't know, a huge part of the manga was consumed by food from time to time. But for the most part, we just forget the, about the food and we concentrate on the plot and on the, the, the culture of the Anui people. It's great, but you just have to wait for it a little bit. And even with that huge pacing issue, from the first chapter to the, the very current chapter of the 300 and whatever the fuck, you can feel the quality that's fucking bursting out of this manga, the sheer care that has been put into this. Be that the huge amounts of research that the mangaka had to do to keep everything like semi-accurate at least to real life events, uh, be that the historical figures that we reference left and right for no reason apart from being cool and uh, knowing a lot of shit about history. And don't even get me started on how the author was inspired by his personal life to create this manga and how some characters are inspired by his real life relatives. This is at its very core just dedication and passion for the craft of manga. It's it's so beautiful to see and to experience and undoubtedly where the manga shines the most are the characters. Just like how it is in real life with real people, you warm up to these fellows slowly but surely. Now that's definitely not because they're bland and we maybe find out what they're about later on in the story. No, we see a character, we know what they're about, they have a very clear way of thinking, they have a philosophy for life and all of that shit. However, why we warm up to them is because every single character in here is expanded upon. Or most of them anyway, I feel like the criminals... Some of them could be a little forgettable, but most of them were either very fucking cool or very fucking funny. Now, the comedy in the manga is probably something that I should have mentioned earlier, but th this is sometimes fucking hilarious. And wow, like 50% of that is just like visual comedy. The other 50% is just characters being charming. 
they simply have good dialogue. They're going through crazy shit, cracking jokes, having fun with each other. They feel like a real life group of friends that are just um, going about their, their days and their lives and shit. And inevitably, as you continue progressing through the story, you start feeling like a part of that group, simply because you have observed them go through so much shit together. And what more can you really want from characters? Now with that said, I found like two little issues with, with the characters and that being that our main boy, even though he's heavily characterized throughout the story, his backstory j just doesn't feel that impactful when compared to some of the backstories that are revealed to us later on. So in general, he just doesn't feel that special. However, of course, that's fixed when the story actually starts and we follow his character progression that's happening in real, real time. But again, those flashbacks were just a little too stale. And the second issue is this young lady right here. Uh, I like her, alright? I, I like uh, what she has done with her life in general, how she was integrated in the story at the start at least. However, she is just simply not that present in the story, but he has a huge impact on everything. And I feel like the manga just expects us as the audience to care about her. A little too much. I feel like there is uh, this artificial importance given to her character that is there for absolutely no reason. But apart from that, everything's pretty cool. Now, considering everything, there are definitely some some bad aspects of this manga. However, it's clear that it's intelligently made. It's it's clear that there's so much care and and so much charm in mostly every aspect of of the manga here, and that's great. And unfortunately, I feel like that blinds people to uh, the, the flaws of the manga because it is like semi-sophisticated, I guess you could say. It's not a traditional story. And because of that, I feel like some people get a little too carried away in their scores, in, in their praise. Not, not that I'm shaming anybody for liking anything, do whatever you want. But when it comes to me, I give the shit anywhere between a strong 8 and a light 9. I mean, that's just how it is, man. You put a Bible quote in your manga, you get an 8 by default, you know. These are the rules, I just follow them, I don't make them. Hey, <laughs> it's the end of the video, which means that I have to tell you that this is a manga club, you know, the next three videos I'll be publishing. And if any of these two mangas look interesting to you, then you can read ahead of time. And the, the third video I'll be doing is a bit of a mystery, a bit of a... A bit of a exciting announcement, if you will, that will take me a little bit of time to to develop. So I'm just I'm just taking that one uh, upload date. It's it will be pretty cool. Let's just say that, and let's fucking move on to social media because I exist there and I post manga panels every other day, hyping up the next manga. In the last few days, mainly complaining about how sick I've been. And to be honest with you, I'm still a little sick. So that's the reason why I sound like shit. And, like, mainly the reason why I look like it, too. So, it's been a bit of a struggle these days. A few things piled up on me. That's why this shit is, like, five days late. However, I'm hoping that uh, I get my shit together and my fucking soul returns to my body. And next video will be on time. And I will sound, like, semi-good. And everything will be fixed. So, let's fucking hope for that. But for now, fucking, this is the end. See you next time.